Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Smith & Wesson 586 air pistol. Smith & Wesson are a company that you're probably all aware of. They're an American firearms manufacturer, synonymous with revolvers, both modern and classic. Now this gun is an air gun replica of the Smith & Wesson 586 revolver, originally chambered in 357 Magnum or 38 Special. Um, this gun though isn't actually made by Smith & Wesson, but it is made under license from them by Umarex in Germany. So, let's take a closer look. It comes in this fitted hard case. Now this is just made of plastic, but it does the job of stopping it getting knocked around. Now on the front you can see it's got a big Smith & Wesson logo and a Brokop sticker, who obviously imported the gun. Now if I turn it around and open the case, there you can see the gun, and the uh, foam interior also has spaces for CO2 capsules, a uh, place for pellets, and also comes with a cleaning brush. Now when you first see and handle this gun, the first thing that strikes you is the size and weight of it. Now it's 29.5 centimetres or 11.6 inches long and weighs 1.29 kilograms or 2 pounds 13 ounces and that is almost exactly the same weight as the original Smith & Wesson firearm. And to give you some context, I've got a couple of other air pistols out here. As you can see it absolutely dwarfs my Webley Senior and even my RO72 Panther Deluxe, which is a large brake barrel pistol, is not even that much bigger. Now, the reason for that weight is because it really is a solid and very well-made gun. It's nearly all metal construction, uh, with only a handful of plastic parts, namely the sights, uh, this catch on the side here, and the grips, which are made of a rubberized plastic, which make them nice and comfortable. This model has a six inch rifled barrel. Now you can also get them with a four inch barrel and you used to be able to get them with an eight inch barrel but the eight inch version was discontinued in 2004. Now whilst I don't think you can buy barrels separately uh, you can actually remove and therefore change the barrel on these. Now when this was new it would have come with a specialist tool for removing the barrel but I don't know what's happened to that as this isn't actually my gun I've kindly just been lent it to the video. But instead I can just use an ordinary allen key. Now with this I can unscrew the plug in the end here and then this whole section which is just the barrel sleeve just pulls off and then this is the barrel itself which can then be unscrewed and then looking down that hopefully you'll be able to see that that is rifled this gun is CO2 powered <clears throat> it takes these 12 gram CO2 capsules or powerlets now these cost around uh, 50p to a pound each depending on where you buy them and how many you buy at a time and if you shoot this gun until it's near enough empty you get around 75 shots from one of these CO2 capsules uh, which is more than I thought I would so I was pleasantly surprised by that uh, you do need to keep an eye on the power drop off though towards the end of the CO2 now the CO2 capsule goes into the grip so to load it you need to remove the right hand grip panel uh, by undoing this screw now whilst having the grip screwed on keeps it nice and secure and tight it's a little bit hassle as it means you need a screwdriver every time uh, I'd have preferred if it was just a clip on or something so once that unscrewed you can remove the grip panel so to insert the CO2 you need to uh, check that this brass screw is all the way down and then pull down this CO2 lock you then take your capsule and insert it neck up although I should say at this point, um, because I'm just demonstrating here and I'm still going to be handling the gun, I'm putting in an empty CO2. You can see it's already been pierced there. So put the CO2 in, and you screw this brass screw up just by hand until it's just touching the CO2. You don't want to do it any further than that. Then you can replace the grip panel, put the screw back in, Right, 
So then once you've done that, you then need to push this CO2 lock up, and by doing that it pushes that whole brass screw up, which then pushy, uh, pushes the uh, neck of the capsule up, which then pierces it and releases the CO2. Then once you've finished shooting, you need to fall down on the CO2 lock, and that releases uh, the last dregs of the CO2, and then you can then take the panel off, unscrew that brass screw, and remove the capsule. This gun is in 177, uh, which is the only calibre it comes in, and it fires pellets. And the reason I point that out is because some guns of this style fire BBs. It has a 10 round magazine, and to release that, you push on this catch on the side, and the cylinder drops down. Um, as this is a revolver, the magazine or the cylinder does revolve, but it is only this thin section at the front. Most of the cylinder is actually moulded to the frame of the gun. Now some air guns of this type, such as the replica of the Webley Service Revolver and the Dan Wesson pistols have a full cylinder that rotates, often with fake cartridges that you load a pellet or BB into the end of, uh, then load the cartridges into the cylinder, uh, but this isn't one of those, it's just got a thin magazine at the front. So to load the magazine, you can either leave it attached to the gun, like this, and push the pellets in, and just turn the magazine as you load the pellets, or you can actually remove the whole magazine and put the pellets in, which is a lot easier. So how this action works is, the magazine uh, spins freely on this central rod, but then when it's closed up, you can see this small piece of metal in the bottom here, that um, interacts with the cutouts on the side of the magazine to lock it in place so that it won't move. But then when the hammer is cocked, you can see me doing there, this uh, locking piece moves down and out of the way, uh, allowing the uh, magazine to turn. And at the same time that happens, you can see a small little hand comes up there. That then interacts and pushes on the teeth on the centre of the magazine. So it's locked in. As the hammer's pulled back, it unlocks the magazine. This hand indexes the magazine one place and then this comes back up to lock it in. So in slow motion pulling back the hammer, releases the magazine, hand pushes it round and then this comes back up to lock it. This revolver can be used as both single action and double action and that relates to how many uh, actions the trigger performs. So in single action you have to manually cock the hammer which indexes the magazine. Um, so all the trigger does is release the hammer to fire the gun, therefore performing a single action. Now in double action, you don't need to cock the hammer manually as pulling the trigger both uh, cocks and fires the gun, therefore performing a double action. Now both have their uses. Uh, generally single action is better for precision shooting, whereas double action is better for rapid fire. This is 10 shots single action. This is 10 shots double action. On the subject of the hammer, there's actually a really nice feature on this, which is a great attention to detail. Now on a proper firearm, the purpose of the hammer is to strike the primer on the back of the cartridge and therefore fire the gun. Now I had initially assumed therefore that on an air gun version the hammer was only really there for visual authenticity, but it does in fact fire the gun. Now when I pull the hammer back slightly, you can see that there's a small metal pin in there and that is the release valve for the CO2. So then when I pull the hammer back all the way, you can see that a metal plate comes up and covers it, and then when I pull the trigger, the hammer then falls, hits that metal plate, and pushes it into that CO2 valve, uh, therefore um, firing the gun. 
and because of that you can also uncock a loaded gun this one uh, if I hold the hammer as I pull the trigger and then gently gently release the hammer and the trigger you can see that the plate comes back down and the hammer doesn't, uh, doesn't then rest on that pin so it doesn't fire the gun now I really like that aspect of the gun they've gone out of their way to make the hammer function as much like a real revolver as possible and you also appear to be able to put the gun on half cock there is no safety catch on this gun uh, but there it does seem to be at least one built-in safety feature as you can see there is a small uh, spring-loaded lever behind the trigger and when you pull the trigger that then does push in that lever so I suspect that that has to be depressed in order for the uh, gun to fire uh, therefore if you just drop it it shouldn't go off uh, in terms of the sights it just has standard open sights which as I mentioned earlier are made of plastic now it's quite a good sight picture uh, the sights aren't bad at all and this rear sight is adjustable for windage and elevation although you will need a screwdriver to make those adjustments so looking at the markings on the gun on the left hand side you can see the Smith & Wesson logo now this gun may only be manufactured under license from Smith & Wesson uh, but they are not afraid to put their name to it and that is because it's a very nice well made gun here we have the serial number which is 2S2150-5480 um, if that's purely numerical for this model that puts this gun at just over 21.5 million which seems somewhat high so that serial number range may well include other models or it may be uh, part of a batch number or something like that I'm not sure uh, because of that I can't confidently say how many of these pistols have been made but they were first introduced in 1999 and they are still in manufacture over here we have Smith & Wesson uh, mod 586 so model 586 and then this 6 indicates that this is the 6 inch barrel model and then underneath it says adult gun only if I turn the gun over to the right hand side you can see that it says manufactured under license from Smith & Wesson Springfield Massachusetts USA made in Germany uh, unusually though there is no Umarex marking on the gun most of the ones I've seen uh, say Umarex or have their logo here this F in the Pentagon um, is a German marking uh, which indicates that it has a power or a muzzle NG of less than 7.5 joules which works out at 5.53 foot-pounds which means that it can then be legally owned in Germany without a permit now further up we've got caliber 177 or 4.5 millimeter pellet and a picture of a pellet in case you didn't know what one of those looked like and again the reason it specifies pellet is because lots of guns of this type fire BBs and underneath it says warning before using read owner's manual available free from Smith & Wesson now I can understand why this and the adult gun only on the other side are put on the gun but I really dislike them and for me personally they do detract from the gun very slightly so now you've seen the gun close up and in detail I think it's time we test it out a bit uh, first of all I'm going to do an accuracy test I'm going to be shooting at one of these 14 centimeter square targets of a range of probably just under 10 meters and to do that I'm going to be using these 7.9 grain base date range master pellets Here I have my target. Now as you can see that all 10 pellets went in or at least half in the central blue section uh, and that gave me a spread of 2.8 centimeters uh, so just over an inch and for a plinking pistol with open sights I'm pretty happy with that it certainly is good as I expected. So having tested the accuracy I'm now going to test the power using my chronograph and I'll again be using those 7.9 grain day state range master pellets.
here I have my chronograph test sheet. Uh, unfortunately, as you may have seen, one of the pellets didn't register, so these figures are only based on nine pellets. I've got an average velocity of 406.38 feet per second, with a spread of 57.1 feet per second, uh, with the highest being 442.6 feet per second, and the lowest being 385.5 feet per second, which is a slightly bigger spread over 10 shots than I expected. Now, using that average velocity, I've got a power of 2.90 foot-pounds, so that's not massively high, but for a gun like this it doesn't really need to be. Now that power test was using the first 10 shots of a new CO2 capsule. Uh, I did another string of 10 shots straight after that, and the velocity seemed to have stabilised slightly. I got a much lower spread of 28.1 feet per second, with the average being 378.61 feet per second, which gave me a power of 2.52 foot-pounds. So there you've seen the Smith & Wesson 586 air pistol, made by Umarex. Now this isn't the kind of gun that I would usually go for, as I'm not really a big fan of air gun replicas of actual firearms, and that's because I can't help but feel that they're trying to be something they're not. That being said, when I first borrowed this, I opened the case and picked up the gun for the first time, uh, I actually felt really excited to get it out and shoot it, and that's because it both looks and feels fantastic. Now this is tremendous fun to shoot, and it really is well made. Uh, the accuracy is okay, and whilst the power isn't great, uh, you get an awful lot of shots per CO2 capsule, and for a plinking gun, that's a more than acceptable trade-off. Now, if I'm honest, I probably still wouldn't go out and buy one of those, that's just out of personal preference, but I can now certainly see their appeal, and if you like guns like this, this is probably, probably the closest you're going to get, as even if you hold a firearm certificate, you're not going to be able to go out and get something like a Smith & Wesson revolver here in the UK. Now, in terms of price, uh, the Air Gun World Buyer's Guide 2016 gives the retail price as £247.50, with most retailers selling them for around £240, and if you're after a second-hand one, you can expect to pay around £165. So, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed the video, and if so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury, and until next time, keep your arms in the air.